Hi, gun people. Yeah, I want to do a follow-up to this video because the questions and the comments are kind of sparking some interesting debate. So, this was a video where the cop asked the guy to slap him, and the guy put his hands on him, and then he knocked the crap out of him and knocked him down. And a lot of people were talking about entrapment. Um, that's a clear case of entrapment. So, we're going to talk about entrapment. This happened at an AHOP in Texas, Harris County. Uh, I put the uh, contact information in the description of the of the video. I'll try to put it in this one, but I, I doubt if I remember. But anyway, uh, so here we go. So the people that didn't see the video, uh, this cop tells this guy to slap him, and I won't arrest you. If you want to do something, slap the shit out of me. Get it off your chest. Slap the shit out of me and get it off your chest. He's talking to himself. Slap the shit out of me and get it off your chest. So he's saying, slap the shit out of me and get it off your chest. He's actually inviting. This cop doesn't have a leg to stand on. He tapped to, as soon as he put this guy, little bitty chicken arms, watch what he does to him. So basically, I'd explain real quick disparity of force. Cops a lot taller, a lot stronger, armed, bulletproof vest, mace, pepper spray, has backup during the daylight, not at night, not outnumbered, Huge disparity of force. Three officers, one old guy. These guys are all young and fit. This guy's old. I mean, disparity of force is just crazy on the use of force issue. The guy even looks confused in this pause. This is where he's probably getting a little closer to an entrapment defense, which we'll get into here. No, I'm giving you permission to slap the shit out of me. So he said, are you going to arrest me? And he goes, no, I'm giving you permission. To slap the shit out of me. Get it off your chest and see what happens. This guy did not really slap him, although, textbook definition, he put his hands on the guy. That's battery. Even though the cop said, go ahead, I'm giving you permission, I'm not going to arrest you, is that entrapment? Don't fuck it. Now, I can't tell what he said after this. Arrest me, and he goes, no, I'm giving you permission to slap the shit out of me. I don't know if you guys can tell, as soon as he hits him, he says something to him about take that or something. I don't know if you guys can make out what he's saying. Listen closely. Get off your chest and see what happens. Don't fuck it. Okay, so, he, he, so that's the incident. Now let's talk about entrapment. So this is the penal code for Texas, and I'm going to read the statute because this happened in Texas. Some people were saying in California, you think, I'm not sure... It might fly in California. I think entrapment is closer in Texas. But I put this on a smaller sheet so I can get it in. It's not so big because this is uh this takes up the full screen. And reading it will be a pain. So let's go. Okay, so in Texas, it's under principles of criminal responsibility, chapter eight. Eight oh one is insanity. Um why ain't it letting me click that off? Okay, eight oh one's insanity. 802's mistake of fact, which is what should have been the defense for Amber Geiger, where she shot the person thinking she was in her own home. This should have been her defense, but I'm sure we'll hear about that again. They filed for an appeal on that for their right to appeal. They have not officially appealed her conviction yet. But if you don't file within 30 days that you're, that you're going to appeal, then you lose the right to appeal. So they went ahead and filed. It was big news. Everybody was like, they're appealing, they're appealing. I'm like, no, they're not. They're reserving their right to appeal. They're still deciding. So they have not decided yet. Uh, mistake of law. This is no defense. Uh, intoxication does not constitute an offense. 805 is duress. This is an affirmative defense. If you can prove you're under duress, the only thing that duress normally doesn't cover is deadly force. So if I hold a gun to your head and say, help me rob this bank, and you go in and rob the bank with me, you cannot be held because you're under duress. Now, if I say, go in and rob this bank, I give you the gun and tell you to shoot that person, and you shoot them, now you can't use under duress. If I take your kids and say, I'm going to kill your kid, and let's shoot that person, and you shoot a person, you cannot use duress defense. That's in most states. I don't think there's a state that is different, but whatever. 806 in Texas, entrapment. It is a defense to prosecution that the actor, in Texas they use the actor as a suspect, or the or I call them the victim because they're a victim of government. But it's basically the person who's being charged. 
It is a defense to prosecution that the suspect engaged in the conduct charged because he was induced to do so by law enforcement agent using persuasion or other means likely to cause persons to commit the offense. Conduct merely affording a person an opportunity to commit an offense does not constitute entrapment. So, if I leave a bike in front of a store and I don't put a lock on it, and you come out and steal that bike, that is not entrapment. Cops do this all the time. We put bait cars out. They put bait uh, bicycles out. That's not entrapment. We're making the opportunity for the crime, but we're not specifically targeting individuals trying to get them to commit the con the crime. When you get into specifics of individual persons, you get closer to entrapment. In this section, law enforcement agent includes, this guy was a law enforcement agent. He was sheriff's department with so-and-so. -so. so in this definition of entrapment, do you think the guy is guilty of entrapment? A person, the actor, can engage in conduct charged. He was induced to do so by law enforcement, by a law enforcement agent using persuasion or other means likely to cause persons to commit offense. Conduct merely affording the opportunity does not constitute. So, here's where it gets muddy. Did the law enforcement agent persuade him by saying, go ahead and slap me? That's going to be an issue for the courts to say whether or not this defense works. So, and conduct merely affording a person the opportunity, is that what the cop did? I merely stuck my face out, Your Honor, and said, go ahead and slap me. Any reasonable person would know that if you slap a cop, you're going to jail. So, but now was his response reasonable when a guy really didn't slap him hard and he kind of told him to, not only told him once, he told him like three times, no, no, go ahead. No, no, I'm giving you permission. So he went like almost three times to get it. Is that considered persuasion likely to cause persons? And usually when they say persons, it's not the person that committed offense. It's a normal, reasonable person. So would most people slap a cop if a cop did that? If the answer is no, then there's no entrapment. So... I'm not so sure entrapment falls into this as a defense. Now, I don't think the old guy is going to get charged. So he doesn't need a defense. This is only if you get charged by the government. So unless they charge him with assault, he doesn't need to invoke this defense. Now, they may charge him with assault or putting their hands or something, maybe to lessen the lawsuit. But, man... That officer should be 100% liable, and he should lose his limited ability or limited immunity because his response was so outrageous. His response, I talk about the term, shock the conscience of the court. When the court gets so offended by someone's conduct that no reasonable person would see that as being reasonable, the court makes rulings that it shocked the conscience of the court, and they'll rule against the guy. This cop. His conduct, to me, should shock the conscience of the court, and they should take away his limited immunity, in my opinion. Now, I'm not the ruler, you know, so whatever. Uh, there's another incident I want to show you on this. So I looked up California entrapment just for GP to see what it said, and uh, this is a, I, th I call them jury instructions, but I think they call them, well, they go crim jur. Calcrim, that's what they call it. All right, Crop Calcrim, 3408, jury instruction. So in California, it says entrapment is a defense. The defendant has the burden of proving this defense by the preponderance of evidence. That's pretty good because, remember, preponderance of evidence is a much lower standard. That's a civil standard. That means I only have to tip the scales. That means if you come up with five facts and I come up with six facts, I tip the scales. So preponderance of evidence is much easier to win. Remember, in criminal cases, it's a much higher standard. Beyond a reasonable doubt and above a moral certainty. Uh, this is a different standard than what criminal is what they're saying. To meet 
This burden, the defendant, that's the suspect, must prove, in, Cal in Texas they call that the actor, must prove that it is more likely than not likely he was entrapped. So this may fly under this strict interpretation right here, may fly in California. Let's see. A person is entrapped if a law enforcement officer, his or her agent, engaged in conduct that would cause a normally law-abiding person to commit a crime. If the guy that hit him in Texas here has no other criminal offense, I think he would be a law-abiding person. But I don't know if they're going to take him or reasonable people. Some examples of entrapment might include badgering, per persuasion by flattery or coaxing, was what his conduct was. Would you say coaxing? No, go ahead. Stick my face out. Repeated or insistent request. Eh, or an appeal to a friendship or sympathy. You know what? I, this might, in California, be an easier entrapment offense. Again, entrapment isn't anything to do with the officer. It's only to do with the person being charged. Now, the officer... If he's charged with a crime, may try to get entrapment, but that ain't going to fly. He was a law enforcement officer. Nobody told him to do it. So, uh, so according to this article about affirmative defense, it says right here that the elements of entrapment are, in Texas, whether the accused was induced to engage in the conduct by law enforcement agent. That's one part. Second part, whether the means of inducement used were likely to cause persons, not the accused, persons, a normal reasonable person, to commit the offense. The focus on the first part of the test, whether the government agent induced the accused uh, or merely provided an opportunity for them to act. The second part of the test determines whether the whether other persons would have committed the crime under circumstances at hand. And normally when you get an entrapment, it's where, uh, let's say I have an informant, and the informant goes up to a dude and goes, hey man, you want to buy some marijuana? And the guy goes, no nah, man, uh, I don't smoke and I don't buy dope. And the informant follows the guy and says, dude, I'm going to give you a really good deal. I normally charge 50 bucks, I'm going to give it to you for 25 and the guy goes, no, man, I told you I don't use drugs. He goes, dude, you can resell it and make money. I'll tell you what. I found this dope. I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. The guy goes, damn, 10 bucks. I could probably sell this for 20. Okay, I'll buy it. That would be a classical entrapment. He was induced. He was encouraged. He was given an opportunity that, hey, now, I don't know if a normal, reasonable person would do that because I don't care what kind of deal you give me. I'm not buying your drugs. So... And I, I use marijuana, and I know I'm going to get the marijuana lovers here. It's just a piece of grass. I, all right, let's 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 say it's cocaine. Let's say it's LSD. Let's say it's whatever drug that you don't like. So that would be an entrapment case. Um, if I pull up, let's say I'm working uh, law enforcement, auto theft, and I pull up with a bait car. And instead of just parking it and getting out and leaving the keys in it, I get out, I look at a group of guys standing there, and I say, hey, dudes. Anybody want this car? It's all yours. Here's the keys. And I lay it on the top and leave. Now I'm getting closer to entrapment. It still may not meet entrapment, but I'm a lot closer. So uh, I think where people were making the comments is everybody was kind of like entrapment, kind of like that makes the crime go away, or it could be an enhancement on the cop. It's not. It's merely a defense from a person charged with a crime. So the only one that entrapment helps is if they try to prosecute the old guy for hitting the officer. Which, if they charge the officer, they're going to need the old guy to testify. So they're probably not going to want to charge him. They're going to probably say it's dismissed in the interest of justice. The officer's response and taunting of the individual was so egregious and so outrageous that we did not charge him, we did not think it was in the interest of justice. In fact, we charged the officer because under the color of authority and the size disparity, and he used his position to taunt somebody and to actually provoke a fight on a citizen under the color of authority, 
and he got a response that he wanted, which wasn't really that aggressive, and his reaction was so over the top that we charged him. I think that cop ought to be charged with felony. I think he ought to be charged with assault under the color of authority. I think he ought to be charged with assault while armed with a firearm. Because he was armed, he had a bulletproof vest, and he attacked an unarmed citizen. And people that want to haul it for gun control, if cops are doing this to citizens when we have the right to carry guns, what the hell do you think they're going to do if they get the, the, the law changed to where we don't have the right to carry guns? This was an outrageous case. I hope people flood, and I hope this cop is the poster child for freaking police abuse. But you know what? I think it's going to get brushed under the rug. It'll be the news story for a day or so, and it'll move on. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about entrapment, charges, immunity, and all that. And uh, we'll end that there.